Okay. Previously, we have talked about uh, spinodal decomposition. Specifically, in previous treatment, we have made the assumption that the chemical individual energy as well as the coherence a string related individual energy can be neglected. And then the treatment was relatively simple. Now let's look at a situation when the individual chemical and the coherence energy terms could not be neglected, which is getting closer to reality. Okay? So, as we mentioned uh, in the interface section, the individual chem chemical energy term come from the bonding of the atom to the wrong types of atom. Essentially, the bonding between A and B atom individual energy, no matter how similar A and B are, will be somewhat different from the bonding energy between A and A and B and B. As a result, there will be a related individual chemical energy term. Okay? And uh, for simplicity, it can be approximated as K times the square terms of the composition difference divided by lambda, which is the wavelength from between the neighboring uh, composition fluctuation. Okay? This delta and G, gamma means the interfacial energy, gamma for interfacial energy due to chemical difference and it's related to the composition fluctuation delta x as well as the separation between the neighboring um, regions with different composition. Of course, the larger the composition difference, the larger this chemical energy term, the smaller this um, wavelength or more frequent this wavelength, the larger this interfacial energy. Okay, and here K is a proportional constant, and for our discussion, let's just treat it as a constant and not go into the detail. And the lambda, as we mentioned, is a wavelength for so-called composition variation or compositional modulation. How does the P valley and the peak, what's the separation between the valley and the peak in the composition variation or fluctuation? Okay. In addition to the chemical term, as we mentioned, between different atoms, there's always a coherent string energy term if we uh, look at the details, because no matter how close the different elements are, there's always some minor difference in the atom size, and that is going to cause a geometric uh, or coherent string due to, of course, different in difference in atom size, even though the atom size difference can be very small. And uh, for simplicity, its value, this coherency string related individual energy, um, it's written as delta G, S, S for string, is written in this form, and eta square times delta X square times Young's modulus divided by one minus Poisson ratio times the molar volume. And if we, uh, we can simplify it further by using the E prime, uh, a related uh, Young's modulus term. And then this is what we have, okay? And here, eta is defined as one over A, which is lattice constant, times how much does lattice constant A changes with respect to composition, okay? So this is our eta term. It kind of mirrors how fast does lattice parameter changes with respect to compositional fluctuation. That's one term, eta, and then mu is Poisson ratio. So these, with these, we can estimate the coherent string energy term due to 
the difference in atom size. And of course, we would see here, the larger the composition fluctuation, the larger this geometric uh, uh, coherence string energy effect. At the same time, the larger the lattice parameter change with respect to composition, the larger this coherence is string energy term. Okay, so these are the two additional contributions that for reality situation, um, periodic situation that we quite often have to consider. One is chemical term, one is coherence or geometric term.